right, still a little raining. Rainy skies over San Andreas. Can't see much of it when you're in the cockpit though. Little bits of rain. Good day to go back inside the hangar. Make ourselves a, uh, a new plane. <laughs> Hello there everybody. That's me in there. I'm the Missing Sock. Welcome back for more Grand Theft Auto Online. Let's turn around. All right, so today I think we're going to get the LF-22 Starling. So I told some people that we were going to do some laid-back grinding, but that uh, unfortunately I, I got delayed with life and I fell asleep for longer than I wanted. And now the sale's running out, so we better get them all we can. I didn't want to take the chance on missing them. So we'll get those new aircraft, and hopefully uh, any of you guys who missed it can catch it on the next sale, or uh, maybe you'll think it's worth it for the even for the extra price. So let's have a look. Cruising there in Nakoda a little bit. Yeah, there we go. A little bit. Ooh, she likes to tilt down though. <laughs> well, we'll just have to be quick about this. All right, so here we go. So we're going to go into uh, Warstock. There we go. And we're going to go all the way down until we find our LF-22 Starling. Yeah. Well, no, I'm... Of course, in the interest of speed, I put down my notes. There we go. So it's normally uh, 3.6 million and 57,000. And uh, with the trade price, it's 2 million 750,000. Yeah. And it holds 50 bombs, so that's kind of nice. And we're going to get on sale for 40% off for 1.6 million. Yeah. Seats one. One moment you're on the runway, slowly inching into position, into position, wondering what all the fuss is about. The next, you're 200 feet in the air and rising, a shrieking human speck on the front end of a blazing rocket trail making straight for the stratosphere. <laughs> Why are you doing this? How do you get down? What happens if you start crapping out heavy munitions at this speed? Honestly, we're hoping you tell us. <laughs> All right, bye now. There we go. 1.6.5 million gone. Oh yeah, we got plenty of time. Good job, Nakoda. Good job. <laughs> All right, let's head down to our hangar and check it out. Yeah, we'll have to come back soon for some more stuff, but yeah, I thought I'd get this sail out of the way and we'll get this uh, new aircraft, and then we'll do some more uh, laid-back grinding, uh, more unofficial how I make my money, you know, uh, a day in the life of the missing Zark. <laughs> There's the airbase right over there. Let's head on in. Wheels down. Coming in for landing. <laughs> and not on an approved runway. <laughs> Let's do the front facing cinematic. There we go. All right. Good job, Nakoda. Oh, a little bit of scraping. You gotta watch it. It likes to nose down sometimes. Of course, that sometimes depends on the handling you give it. Mine's kind of sensitive. When it's up in the air, it's nice. On the ground, it's a little wobbly, so you gotta be careful. All right, into the hangar. There we go. All right. <laughs> Hello there, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to the hangar. Hey, there he is. Hi, Charlie. Good job, man. Oh, hey, where's my pyro? <laughs> Did I blow it up? I might have blown it up. Oh, Elf 22 Starling is now confirmed as being delivered. There it is. Yay. Yay. All right. Woohoo. There she is. Our glider slash rocket jet fighter. <laughs> Palmer. <laughs> An all-in-one. They couldn't make up their mind. <laughs> all right. I'm going to call them worse because i got a feeling that they've got my pyro in there. I'm pretty sure I never Hello? usually leave it like this that. This is Morse Mutual Insurance. There we go. Woo I'll do my Ooh. best. Instant delivery. Even better. All right. Apparently, we've got room for all of them, so that's good to know. Because soon I'm going to have to put some more of these in storage, I guess. Probably be my buzzard over there. My personal buzzard, anyway. Because I'm usually using the CEO and Pegasus ones quite often anyway. 
Ah, LJT. Hey, LJT here. There's yeah, I, I'm busy. I know bottlenecks and, and money to be made. <laughs> like I said, guys, I have to do that late bed grinding. But, you know, the time's clearly ticking. It's uh, once again the, the last night of the sale, so I'm on here doing this as I can. <laughs> yeah, so LJT's going to have to wait. He's probably going to call us a few times. So this is the LF-22 Starling, getting back into it. Only seats one compared to the pyro seating two, but that's okay. Most jet fighters and, and uh, type things like this only seat one, except for the big aircraft. Let's hop in. Comes in a gray. We're going to take it out stock, but you definitely don't want a stock one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I don't even think we have a boost when it's stuck. So as you can see, it's on two wheels. It's amazing it even sits like that. You know, so level. It's like you almost feel like if you lean too much inside the cockpit, <laughs> that would fall over. You know? Yeah. So that's why it's also a pain to land as far as most people are concerned. So it's very, ooh, very weird wheels. So you want to watch out for that. Now, I don't think we have a boost anyway, but I'm going to wait until I can turn here. As you can see, it's very slow start up when it's stuck. Nice. Yeah, machine guns. And we're up. So it does have a built in uh, JATO, I guess you could say. You know, JATO thrust. So a built-in stock one, which is more than I thought. I, I didn't really look it up. I tried to keep it surprising for us. And uh, yeah, so it comes with a built-in uh, rocket, which is nice. And the wheels do not go up. That's just your booster. So there's no wheels up. That's wheels out all the time. And I don't think we have a bomb bay. No, no bomb bay until you add one in. Hmm. All right, let's take it in. It's all right decent handling. And this is why some people think it's one of the best uh, dogfighters. I wouldn't say it is. Uh, you know, I'd probably say the Pyro might be. Probably is. But a lot of people lean towards the Starling because of its ability to uh, turn off its engine like this. And once it's like that, it's like a glider. And basically most uh, fast aircraft can't compete with this kind of turning radius. You know, it'll go even better once we uh, upgrade it here. Yeah. So it's got quite the turning radius, which, you know, in most dogfights you end up spirals of death, you know, basically around each other. And quite often the one... Uh-oh. <laughs> Try that again. Let's avoid the hangar. as a way to cruise there, as you can see. I was going to flop my way into the hangar there, but we stopped it. All right. Try this again. This might be oh, a little too fast. Well, that's good, though. I prefer it being too fast than too slow. Maybe just take it easy a little bit. Turn in before we all get dizzy. <laughs> and there we go. Oh, kinda. Hey. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> all right, there we go. So it's got that little uh, propeller on the front. Generally speaking, that propeller would probably be just for stability. Um, it wouldn't really do much in real life, but uh, but it's there anyway. That's all about that rocket. But yeah, you can kill the engine and cruise along and uh, glide, basically. And, uh, of course, you know, outmaneuver a lot of aircraft because of that. Very cool. Yeah, all right. I should not have to back here again. I always do that. <laughs> Look around. Let's hop back in and let's modify it. I don't know what I'm going to do with this one, actually. There's a lot of good ones, I think, for this one. All right, Charlie. Let's get his birds and wings. Yeah. Well, first armor upgrade, definitely. On sale for 37500 I think it's normally 50000 Countermeasures, I like flares. We're going to get those. Yeah, 82500 Bombs. And as we've talked about before, you generally want to leave the base bomb on there. So we're going to get explosive bombs. I hope one day that they fix it or add in different ones, but for now, these these do work in Sendary Gas and Cluster, but they don't, they're not as effective, not as deadly as the regular explosive are. So we're going to get that. No, neither would I. I wouldn't want to see it flying over my place either. <laughs> yeah, so another 56,000 down, and now we're a bomber. And now it holds 50 bombs. Handling. 
All right, so we've covered this before. It's, it's, uh, and it's very sensitive aircraft on this one, being a glider, so you might want to pick and choose this. But basically, you know, if you guys want to look at you can look at our pyro part one there. And uh, I go through uh, the different handlings, and, and it's generally the same on these other aircraft too. So basically, if you want it super sensitive, almost too sensitive, a lot of people, you know, like if you hop into Mallard and it's too sensitive, then uh, you don't want race handling. So race handling gets you the most sensitive you can, but some people find it a little bit, um, um, you know, floppy, a little bit deadly, <laughs> dangerous, you know. Um, the smooth handling is probably your best bet if you want a smooth aircraft, you know, you want to plan your turns out and glide your way along and know exactly where you're going and not have to worry too much about, uh, about quick movements, you know, so a smooth pilot. And the sport's kind of the general balance between the two. So like I said before, I generally would recommend the sport handling. But if you're a pilot like me, you might like the race handling. I kind of like those tight spots. It will kill you, but sometimes it gets you that just that extra little inch to avoid a, um, a building or a, or a tree, you know, that you missed until the last second. <laughs> so race handling for 26250 Libraries. Mm, well, sure, we'll have a look at them for a moment. Not sure what one I'm going to pick you all yet, though. Winter spray. That's cool. Looks wintry. And we get a number at the back. I'm not sure if that's always there. You just can't see it. But now it's VF11A. Yeah. Stars and Stripes. Dazzler. That's kind of cool. Kind of different. Yeah, Falcon 1. And we've got VF10A at the back. Yeah, 11A there. So they're not the same numbers. SR27 on this one. VF-15, you got the little pig on the front, or bat maybe, yeah, yeah, I think it's a bat, bat of death, ooh, for, for a bat wing, <laughs> Air Force display, oh yeah, that's cool, Redwood Racer, Sprunk Extreme, for those that want the Sprunk sponsorship, <laughs> Stargazer, <laughs> that's hilarious. Little bear on the back and everything. I think. <laughs> yeah, that's good though. I definitely wouldn't pick it, but uh, it's it's detailed. You know, Mister Unicorn. <laughs> now that's got to be the most popular one. All those hearts, love, peace symbols. Yeah, peace and bombs. <laughs> peace by destruction. <laughs> Mister Unicorn. That's awesome. All right. Well, that's a hard one, but I think I might actually pick the uh, the Falcon too. The F-15. I kind of like that little bat on the front. Don't know why. Just do. Little detail. Why not? All right. VF-15 it is. All right. Weapons. Homing missiles. We definitely want those. 146,250. I think that's 25% off. Thrust. Rocket boost upgrade. Ooh. He even gets a new little nozzle on there. <laughs> that's 200,000. Excellent. All right, and that is everything except for our respray. Respray, and we have a primary and secondary, so that's kind of cool. There she is in chrome. Some people like that kind of stuff. Some people think it helps you hide in the sky. I'm not so sure, but, you know, I can see the effect, though. You gotta get this right. It's kind of like the Predator movie effect almost sometimes. Shiny black. I don't know, it might be inclined for the matte black, but, you know, it's kind of boring. But oh, It's kind of sharp, actually, on that one. Hmm. Oh, I like the extra details that come out though when you do that too. Green's actually not too bad. Gives it a more of a brown kind of tint to it. Still thinking. Sandy browns. Just go through all the colors here for you guys. While I decide, but I like a lot of these. The greens and the browns. Some of these give it a good military look. Or dark flyer, if that's what you're looking for. Night flyer. I still wish we could tint the windows on the aircraft. They can on the uh, CEO buzzard, so I don't know why they don't let us in here. Wow, that's bright. <laughs> Bronze is kind of cool, too. Congress didn't make us wait this long for funding. White reds. Lava reds. Bright reds. Torino red. Let me get into some Midnight Silvers, Shadow Silvers. Yeah, and back to blacks. And for a moment, we'll have a look at the metals. Because I imagine metal would probably look good in this. Uh, really good in this as well. 
Hmm. I'm not going anywhere. Press black steel. Not bad. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's a hard decision. Like a lot of the greens and stuff, I might, uh, you know, military would look good on this as well. But I think that bronze, actually, I want to look at that again. Oh, I went right by it, didn't I? Mm, blue. Browns? Not in the browns? Mm, well. No. There it is. Bronze. Hmm. I do like that gray, though, on there in the whites. Brings out those stripes, but I don't know. I might try that bronze for now, and maybe we'll give it a black burlescent in a second. Well, actually, we can go in there right now. Nope. Burlescents come real shiny that way. Frostbite, boom. <laughs> but we're going to darken this one a little bit with the black burlescent. And secondary. Yeah, is that all secondary? Yeah, so you can chrome at the bottom. Matte black. <laughs> How exactly do you want to explode people? It's not too bad. I want to see a bronze one and other colors like the browns on there. Moss green, moss brown, saddle brown. It's an important decision. Hmm. Yep, so brown looks good, Greek brown looks good. Now it already has some red tips, so I'm almost tempted to have a look at the red too. Because there's already some red parts on it. Sure is. <laughs> Brings out the points, but eh. Yeah, I'll keep it metallic. Why not? You gotta get this right. I usually lean towards the darks, but I think I'm actually going to pick that, uh, one of those browns. That one kind of melon matches it well. But sometimes an off match is good, because it can bring out the details. Yeah, we're going to go Feltzer Brown. Why not? I'm going to make a match. Might change it in the future. Maybe a matte black or something. But we did lots of black lately, so we'll try something different. Okay, that's the hardest part. <laughs> well, let's uh, let's exit. Exit the hangar, yeah. <laughs> what I did. LJT. Yeah, yes, I'm saving it up for later. <laughs> have to wait. <laughs> All right. And now it's going to go really fast, so we ought to suit up, I think. <laughs> what time was it? 2.32. Nighttime at the base. We're just gonna lift her off. Woohoo! <laughs> Rocket.
That is crazy. We are a spaceman in a space. <laughs> That's crazy. Missiles, machine guns, all right. Nice light up gauges so you can see them well. Where's our altimeter? Where is it? Uh, uh, uh. Look in, I see RPMs, temperatures. I see a whole bunch of stuff. Where is our altimeter? There it is. Oh, I see. So I wonder if this has another, the glider limit of only 4,000 feet. Because I think the ultra glider is limited to how fat, how high up it can go. I wouldn't, th I haven't heard that about this Starling, so I wouldn't imagine so. Oh no, no, we're going way up. Oh, we're above 8,000, we're at eight, almost 9,000 feet. <laughs> So that puts that to rest. No, it's not like the ultra glider. You can go high. Wonder just how high we can go. So normally, and I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's right there. Um, hmm. That's a coolant. So it's just to the bottom right of the coolant there, on the right side of my stick there, right there. See, I'm gonna cover it up underneath there. Cover it up. <laughs> All right. So let's see how high we can go. So 8,000 feet is about the normal maximum. Usually most people consider about 8.1 because you usually most aircraft you can kind of get them up there, but some aircraft kind of hold you back as like it is right now around 8,000 feet. All right, so let's dip down, come back up. And, oh, not good launch, but. Try that again. kills our thing yeah it doesn't let us go any higher but we're at 8,500 feet yeah so it does let you go higher than I think most other aircraft can now you might have to might be able to do it with other aircraft if you timed it just right with your with your maneuvers but I would say generally this goes higher than anything else yeah she doesn't really let you uh, thrust anymore as you guys can tell so if you wanted to do that you'd want to be hitting your thrust before you got to that high so that hopefully your inertia would carry you. See, now I'm still pressing it, but it won't let me. Still cool. Very cool. All right, now our bomb bay. So now we can open that up. And when you're on the bomb bay, um, when you have the bomb bay open, you can press cinematic camera. Okay, that's usually changing your views. Uh, or yeah, it's usually the brake button on a lot of controllers, but you can have your controller set up different ways. But you can just tap it and go in and out of cinematic. Right? And when you go, when you have your Bombay open, it'll put you into the bomb view, which is completely useless, but it gives you something that makes you think that you can be accurate. So there's our carpet bombing ability, a few at a time, and singles at a time too. Yep, there's our flares. There's our bombs. <laughs> That's hilarious. Want to hopefully catch those bombs, but I don't think we're going to get to see them land. Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, hey, we hit the airbase. How about that? We can literally get there faster than our own bombs <laughs> without even using the thrust there either. That's hilarious. <laughs> so you can check your own accuracy, bomb and then dive. <laughs> yeah, so tapping your bomb usually brings out, like your bomb bay usually brings out your flares or chaffs if you have any. And holding it down opens up your bomb bay. 
But I find sometimes when you're at the wrong angles for bombing or too high, it doesn't want to close and open. It can be a little buggy. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that, but you'll find at some weird angles that they don't like to open. See, like now I'm trying and it won't let me. Instead, the flares fire off. Now I'm straight up and it won't let me do anything. So it gets kind of weird that way. So you basically have to be level to do anything really with it. I hope they improve that a little bit because uh, I wouldn't. I, I you can dive bomb, but it's not the way it should be. If you ask me, see, like you can't really properly dive bomb, and I think you should be able to. Woohoo! All right, everybody. Well, that is the LF twenty two Starling, one of the best jet, um, probably one of the best top two um, dogfighters in the game right now. So you definitely want to consider it. It's a great choice. Well worth the money. Uh, might want to wait for the next sale if you missed out on this one. Uh, but yeah, like I said, the hangers are worth it. If you're going to buy any of these new aircraft, uh, the hangers usually eventually pay for themselves. So we just save some more money now and save money on the uh, sale. <laughs> Don't land like that. Here, let me try it again for you guys. Let's try it. You want to land... Yeah, but as you guys can see, it's like... Ooh, it's like trying to land a bike, like the oppressor, but without... without the stability wings, you know. Like, oh. Woo. But, like we said before, this is it's made for the sky, not for the ground. <laughs> yeah, I could have tried, but I got a feeling I would have just died. But you can, like I said, press the button right at the right second in front of your hangar, and you can get inside. We'll try it a little bit. But this is probably a vehicle you want to practice that on because it's so terrible to land. All right, in we go. I like that. I'm happy with that. I like different things sometimes. And like I've talked about before, I like colors, but I like darker colors, you know. And it's hard to find that sometimes, you know, darkness in color. That makes sense. Without always ending up black, you know. Very cool. Let's have a look at that. Oh, yeah. First person here. There we go. Yeah, bat of death. <laughs> nice. All right. Woohoo! Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm the Miss and Sock. Thanks for watching our uh, LF22 Starling. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. It's great to have you guys all with us. Yeah, we're growing like crazy. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, you're amazing. Yeah. And I hope you like our new LF22 VF15. <laughs> Hopefully that helps you guys out. I definitely like it. The only drawbacks I'd say are the price, but you know, it is an aircraft. All the aircraft are kind of pricey. And, um, hmm, like I said, that, um, um, the landing itself is probably its, its uh, weaker points. That said, she's great for what she is, you know. I'm happy with that. Yeah. Gonna have to bomb some people. It's amazing that it fits 50 bombs in that little thing. <laughs> All right. Take care, everybody. I think, yeah, so I did want to do that grinding, but I think I might, uh, I think I might come right back and we'll take a quick break and then come right back and uh, get ourselves a glider before it's too late. The Ultra Glider. Just for the fun of it. It's not necessarily a recommended vehicle, but it is a great, uh, unique collector's vehicle, so I want to get one. And now we've got this glider, the powered glider. Why not get the, uh, well, it's a powered glider too, but the lower powered glider. But uh, hey, at least it's got three wheels <laughs> instead of this one. Ooh. I love that. It's like a rocket. And it will charge while you're in the air, too. Just so you guys know. Unlike a lot of other thrust vehicles, you know, I, I think it's a pain. It's too bad. I really think other vehicles should uh, also charge in the air. But really slowly, you know, perhaps. But this one uh, charges much better. You can see that yellow bar charging in the bottom left. Yeah. So it charges faster when you're on the ground. But it charges while you're in the air, unlike many other thrust aircraft. Very cool. And missiles. As you can see, it's fairly continuous. Yeah, not two at a time like the buzzard or anything like that. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, not the toughest. You gotta learn how to use that. Well, I have to learn how to use that thruster to avoid that. It's basically combining, you know, getting used to the handling of the glider and that thruster at the same time, especially if you're dogfighting, you know, you want to take advantage of the slowness and then quickly take advantage 
of the fastness. You try to get them in front of you and away from behind you. When they get behind you, then you want to kill that engine and flip around, turn, yeah. And get out of their uh, targeting zone. Most aircraft cannot keep up with that kind of stuff. What engine stall? We don't have no engine stall. <laughs> we'll just thrust to the stratosphere. Ooh. Take care, everybody. See you again next time. Ooh. Yeah. Nice maneuverability, too. And not nearly as floppy as uh, as the some of the other recent aircraft, like the Nakoda and the Pyro. It's actually pretty smooth, even though I've got the, uh, the uh, high-end handling. <laughs> and it's obviously classed as a small vehicle too so you can fit it in your hangar with all your others hopefully not have to move anything like we didn't that's out of juice <laughs> I think you want to let it charge for a second and you still get yeah a little bit of boost. <laughs> oh, I don't really like that. <laughs> I wanted to see how it is on landing on the road. Well, rough. That said, she's in good shape. We can pick up our stuff and still go. <laughs> Woo. Too bad, can't take a penny for a ride. Only one seater. <laughs> that way nobody can hear you scream as you thrust <laughs> into the atmosphere. Whoa. I can actually back myself right up. Now that is some strange handling. I think we got some minor damage going on too. She's just my baby mama. <laughs> and... Yep, she's still good to go. I can see some smoke, but we're still good. And on that note, guys, I guess uh, I always have these last minute things, but, but uh, you can actually get this out of the water sometimes, too, if you crash into the water. Now, I don't recommend that, because sometimes it'll just be game over, but sometimes if you pull it up right, oh, there, see, you can actually get it right out of the water. Now, I, I did it. <laughs> I love putting them in the water, apparently. Oh, it's attacking me. It's kicking me back. I know. I'm sorry. I love to <laughs> Or my starling. I'm sorry. See, it's like going down and beating me. <laughs> anyway, guys, I think you got to see the idea, though. Yeah, you know, I did it horribly, and uh, the, uh, the craft was already damaged. But if you time it right, you can actually, um, I don't know, almost flip through the water, you know? Like some birds do, I guess you could say. You could just dive right under for a brief second and then rocket your way back out. If you do it right, it does very little damage to none, but it's very hard to do that. You quite often end up doing damage, but uh, sometimes it uh, gets good. So if you're picking up like a crate in the water, like some people are, you can actually do it in, in, that, uh, in the uh, LF-22 once you practice at it. So, interesting little tip about that, that it can take water for a second and burst its way back out. Not recommended. <laughs> Just a, a not recommended feature. <laughs> Morris, it's me again. I don't know what happened. Morse Mutual, how can I be of service? Oh, right on. I love their premiums sure. for aircraft. <laughs> their premiums for aircraft are not bad. Only a thousand bucks. Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah. All the ladies want to talk to me when I wear my pilot outfit. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Hi. <laughs>